I am Dr. Dinesh Shirla and today I am going to discuss about neonatal transport. Transport of sick neonates, preterm and low birth weight babies forms an important link in chain of events improving the neonatal outcome as part of India Newborn Action Plan. Transport of newborns by untrained, unskilled personnel leads to increased risk of hypoxia, hypoglycemia, hypothermia, infection, as a result, increase in risk of mortality. We need to move from transfer of newborns in ad hoc manner by unskilled personnel to structured transport of newborn by skillful personnel to improve the neonatal outcome. In this lecture, we are going to cover the overview of neonatal transport, the administrative aspect of establishing the neonatal transport, the skill set required by neonatal transport team, the configuration of neonatal transport team, and the safety check required to establish neonatal transport services, the medical legal aspect of neonatal transport, and family counseling. A timely safe transport can decrease mortality and long term morbidity. The aim of transport is to transfer the right patient at right time by the right people to the right place in the right form of transport so that the child gets the right care throughout the transport. The common category of transports are either the child has to be transferred from a home to the hospital in case of a home delivery or a child getting sick at home or a child has a seizure at home or in cases of transport within the hospital say from the delivery room or operation theater to the NICUs or SNCUs. Transfer from other hospitals like peripheral hospital to a regional center or the transfer of a newborn because needing a specialist care like needing a surgery or needing a cardiac care or reverse transport the child has been transferred it needs a transfer back because now child has a surgery and is recovering and can be transferred back to the center so that the child can go closer to the home. In spite of all the advances in the neonatal transport services transfer of mother that is in utero transfer to a center where the neonates can be taken care or the facility to take care of the newborns will definitely improve the outcomes of the neonates and improve the mortality. The in utero transport is still the best modality of transport, especially in high risk pregnancies when you are anticipating extremely low birth weight babies or very low birth weight babies or surgical neonates like diaphragmatic hernia and congenital heart disease where your unit does not have facilities to care of to take care of those babies after the birth of the newborns. The commonest mode of transport in India is still the road transport. However, air transport facilities like helicopter and aeroplane is now currently available in our country. The commonest causes of referral to higher centers in India are prematurity, sepsis, respiratory distress syndrome, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, surgical newborn like necrotizing enterocolitis or congenital malformations especially congenital heart diseases. There are two types of structural transport teams, either a dedicated transport team or a unit based transport team. A dedicated transport team is one where they are either in a hospital or a freestanding transport services where the primary responsibility is only to provide neutral transport services and the system has been running in developed countries for the last 30 to 40 years. But what is now being provided most of the units in the country is a unit based transport system where a certain staff from the NICUs take part in the transport services and they also provide the neonatal care in the unit and this is what is feasible in our country. For setting up the neonatal transport services in the unit, first we need to understand the need of the transport services, how many babies get referred to our unit, from how far they have to are coming. Also, what are the equipments needed? What is the type of ambulance we need? Establishing the neonatal transport team, setting up the communication services, the communication, setting up the protocols about communication about from unit between unit and unit, between among the doctors, among the nurses, and what type of counseling we need to do the families, 
having a written protocol about your neutral transport services and monitoring the training and quality once the neutral transport services is an important component of establishing neutral transport services. When it comes to equipments, transport incubator, whichever units can afford is an important component of neutral transport services. A transport ventilator and monitor which include which has ECG with SpO2 monitor, thermometer, non-invasive blood pressure monitor, stethoscope, glucose monitor and handled ABG machines, HIE, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. And since cooling has to be started within less than six hours, there's a need to also have a portable cooling devices so that cooling can be started during transport. Temperature care for preterm and sick unit is very important throughout the transport. An inbuilt transport ventilator with a compressor can be part of a transport incubator or you can have an, a standalone transport ventilator. A transport ventilator should have a capability of giving a CPAP, should be able to give PIP, peak and disability pressure. Uh, most, some of them nowadays have uh, synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation capability also. Uh, we should have an inbuilt uh, compressor, um, preferably to give a graded FiO2. Among the list of the equipments or disposables required, we can categorize them that what is required for airway breathing, what is required for circulation, and have a checklist of the number of equipments which you can have, like a sinflate breathing bag and mask. You can have a number of laryngoscopes required, um, the endotracheal tubes required, the catheters required, the suction catheters, the umbilical venous catheters, the IV cut down pack, um, the adhesive tapes, and in specific situations, like uh, for preterm delivery, sometimes you may have to give surfactant at the transport site and take carry your surfactant. And if you're going to transport uh, some congenital heart disease patients, we may have to carry prostaglandin uh, for critically congenital heart disease patients if it's a drug dependent lesions. So the, we can have a checklist of equipment which we need, uh, like the umbu bag, the endotracheal tube, the mask, the syringe pumps, the uh, TP stress air, the ABG machine, the iStat, the glucometer, the monitors, all the disposables we need up after checking should be put in a transport kit and preferably sealed so that the, at the time of transport, uh, the, there's no wastage of time uh, for moving for transport. It is very important for every unit to monitor the response time because a lot of time you might have a very sick neonet and you have to move from unit very quickly to pick up the baby. Designing the ambulance specifically for your uh, new ne newborn is very important aspect of establishing a newborn uh, emergency transport services. We need to design the ambulance so that the incubator could be fixed safely and is not moving inside. We may have to provide a track inside the um, uh, ambulance so that the incubator can be easily loaded inside the ambulance and can be fixed. There should be adequate capacity so that at least two big cylinders can be kept and there should be outlets for oxygen and for electrical outlets. The type of uh, ambulances have been varied uh, from unit to unit. What is an ideal neonatal transport team? In the developed countries, there have been neonatologists, intensivists, pediatricians, nurse practitioners, respiratory therapists, paramedics, and drivers. An ideal transport team in India constitutes of a physician, which could be a pediatrician who's trained in neonatology, a paramedic, a nurse preferably trained in neonatology, and an ambulance driver or a panic. The transport is monitored by the treating pediatrician or neonatologist to ensure the safety of the transport and assessment of the newborn during the transport. What sort of skill set is required during the neonatal transport? The transport team should be able to intubate the child, should be provide bag and mask ventilation, establish IV access, should have a CPR resuscitation skills, provide emergency medications administration, basic clinical assessment skills for newborn diseases to assess if the child is sick, what sort of interventions are required, vital parameter monitoring, heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturation monitoring, respiratory and fluid infusion equipment handling, 
temperature here of the sick newborn and monitoring the sugars and ABG is an important and nowadays even handling the baby for sort of cooling especially if you have a birth asphyxia are important part of the skills. In India training a paramedics and ambulance drivers in basic life support and resuscitation will help the team. A communication should be available 24 by 7. A single call, single number for the unit will help the peripheral units to access the referral center easily and improve the transport communications. A daily checklist of transport items by the two nurses to ensure that during the transport no item is missed is very important component of newborn emergency transport system. Maintaining documentation of transport details, consents and problem for face during the transport is an important component of daily maintenance record of neonatal transport team. Safety of transport is a responsibility of the transport team. They should be set guidelines about the speed of the ambulance, when to put the siren, restraining of the newborn during the transport and also safety of the transport personnel should the guidelines should be laid on by the neonatal transport services. The family should be counseled regarding the risk during the transport and some family members would be accompanying to the transport and preferably they should be, be sitting in the front of in the ambulance and not in the back along with the patient. The neonatal transport team is medical legally responsible for the documentations, care and outcome of the newborns right from the time of pickup of the baby till the, uh, the time they hand over to the referral uh, team. Uh, so proper documentation and evidence-based care of the newborns during the transport constitutes an important component of neonatal transport services. So in short, a safe, efficient transport by skilled neonatal transport team improves neonatal outcome. In neutral transport is the safe, best mode of transport. Communication, equipment, personnel and monitoring are essential components of neutral transport services. Documentation, checklist, training and safety should be addressed by neutral transport team.